Oh, there we go. Hello, folks. Let's get this show on the road. Wow, what a drizzly day. So much for that hurricane that was supposed to come by and destroy most of Florida again. Again, this is why you have Florida man. Because people say, oh, Florida man. <sighs> Whatever. Um, let's see. Let's talk about something wrong. But before I do that, oh, yes, news and notes. Um, I, so. El Vagabundo, um, Ijo Del Hobo El Vagabundo, on his predictions, actually wasn't too bad. We have the match card, even though I didn't get to see some of the matches. And I do apologize for those technical issues. You can see X's and check marks, so you can figure out, well, in, in Christmas list. <laughs> to figure out what, what he did and did not get wrong. And I'll tell you what, overall, for full gear... He was inside the head if she was running it one Stephanie McMahon. Because he got six out of nine right. So that's pretty close. Um, again, I do apologize for that. I think they were having all kinds of stream issues. I was running as many programs as I could. Um, oh, I'll get into what's happening this week. Soon. I think that was my cat using the litter box. But some other news. Seer, you saw, if you join me in the chat, let's see my live stream, you saw Willow Fittichini 69, member of the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. You also saw um, Sonny Bimbo, another member of the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. And then Fifi Dogs. Thank you, sir. It was fun talking to you. It's always good to converse with stuff, politics, um, jujitsu, pro wrestling, basic, any any human stuff. You, sir, are winner twice because you got that six count. Ladder match. You, sir, are extreme. You 
you're also very greedy. You'd take both Tony Storm and Asuka? I'd be happy with Asuka. Oh, and by the way, hey, Asuka, I'm single and I'm 40. Well, a little bit older than 40, but Asuka's getting to that near 4 0 mark. Asuka, if you ever have those lonely nights during these so called hurricanes, I'm the man. Um, but ladder match, you sir. OMG. And the Bean Frey Wyatt. Yep. I forget, what you, I, forget what, I forget what a comment I made. But you were right there. I forget if it was about Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss. Or something else I said. I kind of like lost it after that match. I'm like, meh. But you, sir, can crawl out of here. And Isaiah got cash. Um, I do apologize for ignoring you. I think you were trying to message me or private message me on uh, WooTube. And I think I was having dinner then. I'm sorry I missed your, your message. I couldn't tell you how much of a jackass. You are. But, well, I just did so. That's, so we're all good and square. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. Um, it starts off with Miz TV. And I'll tell you what, they actually piped in the music, the, the sound effect from Welcome to the Most Watched TV Show. Welcome to Miz TV. So they piped in that music. Boo, WWE. Although pretty soon I think they're going to be doing live shows. I think after Survivor Series. AEW's gone to the live show format, at least for the most part. We'll see if I can make it up there one, one, one day. Again, because they're just going to be based out of Jacksonville. They'll probably do, do some minor traveling, but not far. So, still plenty of time for me to catch a live show there eventually. Uh, some Wednesday. Oh, I have to, shoot, I have to schedule myself to work. Crud. But yeah, I sold my stuff up there. That's good. Um, again, Miz TV got piped in the house. Terrible. So they have a Miz TV <laughs> MP3 file somewhere. At least it's not a MIDI file or a WAV. It could be a WAV file, though. Wow, I'm really dating myself with MIDIs and WAVs now. But yep, uh, Miz TV. Um, again, be very careful, Miz. Self promotion is a mating call of the R. K O. Because then of course Randy Orton comes out, he's very upset that hey, you could have you're having those two clowns up there, you should have me, Randy Orton. Uh, New Day shows up, uh, then Drew shows up, then it's a brawl. Uh, Drew eats an RKO. You go to break. And the next match. And this is beginning to really annoy me. Um, it was Jeff Hardy versus Elias versus versus Riddle. I don't like the fact that they keep on dropping the first names of these people. Like, like M Matt Riddle makes sense. Riddle just sounds like he's the Riddler from Batman. And probably the old school Batman. But as long as he doesn't wear any question mark clothing, then I'll be okay. But I don't know what it is with Vince and first names. Who knows? Um, starts off with really a three-way brawl. They all take turns beating up each other. Then, of course, it was a series of roll-ups. Then it kind of broke down to the way three three-way matches normally go. Um, Hardy and Riddell. I still call him Riddell because Riddell just sounds stupid anyway. Stupid name. Uh, they brawl on the outside. Elias notices that he double baseball slide, kicks them out of there. He sends Jeff into the ring post. Probably the hard, one of the hardest parts of the ring. I think it's either one or two on my list. Turnbuckle bolt still has to be the hardest because that's just wrought iron. 
wrought steel. And I'm sure they use like the, the tungsten, like the tungsten chromium steel because they don't want that stuff really to break. They just use a cheaper like aluminum stuff for when they do want it to break. But yeah, again, that's probably the second, mainly because it's metal. Although, I don't know. It might be carbon fiber. It has the LED light, so there might be some plastic. Hmm, maybe it drops a little bit. But again, the turnbuckle bolt itself, that is the hardest part of the ring. Wrought iron. Or tungsten steel. But something much harder than the ring apron. <laughs> Please. Um, so yeah, Jeff got posted. <laughs> he just flung Matt Riddle into the barricade. Then we go to break. I'm in the ring. Jeff kind of does his new flurry of moves, which is really good to see. Elias hit a drift away, but it was broken up by Broton, by Riddle. Jeez, this just sounds so weird. Uh, then Jeff got set up for something. Uh, Riddle. Jeff go at, go back and forth at it. Uh, Elias comes in, hits a drift away. Wait, um, yeah, Elias gets caught in something. Riddell then Riddle hits the bro Derek on Elias because Jeff is out of the picture. Riddle is now on Team SmackDown or Raw. I'm sorry, he's on Team Raw. We'll get we'll get back to him more. Um, and it was, it was a good, it was actually a pretty, it was actually a better match than the guitar and a pole match. It was a cheeseburger match. It's so mostly the other show was terrible. Um, AJ did an interview. Seamus there. Again, he's still there. He's still saying he's a captain. Then we had Mustafa Ali, not Mustafar. Mustafar is a planet in the Star Wars universe. This is Mustafa Ali we're talking about. The announcers can't get that right. They've seen too many Star Wars movies. Or they've seen the same one over and over and over and over again. Even more than me. It's pretty sad, actually. Then we have the Hurt Business um, with Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak wants to thank them. He wants to join the Hurt Business. But he had a clip on tie. If you have a clip on tie, you cannot join anything. Trust me, I think after you get to be fifth, I think even fifth grade, at least I had like the, the wraparound clip tie, the, wrap, the wraparound um, hook tie. The clip-on tie, boo. Clip-on tie was something you had in your gym bag just in case you forgot a real tie. And with a clip-on tie, you just kind of clip that on after gym class to go to your last period class. But yeah, boo. And having gym the last period is always good because that means you didn't have to get changed. But um, yeah, then our truth comes in, covers through new twenty four seven champion. Uh, I don't even care about this twenty four seven belt anymore. Drew Gulak didn't make it interesting. It's a can of soup. Then we had Lana versus Shayna Baszler. Um, Lana looks so nervous and timid. Lana should just run. Just, just, just Lana go to Impact for a while. Because um, you know they're just going to put you through more tables. We'll talk about that later as well. But it was Lana versus Shayna Baszler. Uh, Lana jumps Shayna trying to get that early advantage. Bad idea, Lana. Never going to work. Um, Shayna then just beats up Lana for the most part. Lana tries striking with Shayna. Again, bad idea. Not going to happen. Shayna just deadlift, gut wrenches her, uh, pins her, and then she's like, no, nope, no, nope, uh, I'm not done yet. So instead of pinning her, locks in the coquina clutch, or whatever she calls it, the rear naked choke. Um, Sh Shayna Baser obviously wins. You had Mandy Rose and. Um, Dana Brooke, I almost said Boo Sonya Deville, but yeah, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke were there ringside. Um, they stopped Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax from putting her f through the table for now. Again, this match, 
Lana still has a lot of work to do. It was a can of soup. Then we have AJ Styles. He's going to have a team meeting. Um, when, when Riddle came in, he started to give everyone nicknames. And I'm thinking, what was he smoking in the back? Because he called AJ Styles a skipper. Kind of makes sense. I forget what he called Keith Lee. I forget what he called. That's, that's how great it was. I forgot what he called everyone except for AJ. And then he called Seamus Fireface. And, um. Oh. He, he got his own nickname too. Like Dopey or something. He's like, yeah. <sighs> Vince, it's not funny. Uh, so then AJ says, "You know what? We're gonna we're gonna earn respect for each other." So AJ Styles was the guest referee, and it was Sheamus and Braun Strowman versus Keith Lee and and Riddle. I'll tell you what, AJ did a really good job, and AJ is a lot more durable as a referee than the other WWE officials. We'll get to that. Uh, Riddle, he tried the Kimura. On onto um, Braun, yeah, that's that's just a dumb idea. Um, he gets like crushed in the corner by both Sheamus and Braun Strowman. Sheamus heavy strike. AJ Styles gets speed up. He gets accidentally kicked. Um, and then when Braun and Keith Lee, they first they did double shoulder tackles, bounced off each other, went back against the ropes, and AJ just wandered right in the middle of the ring. He gets sandwiched between the two of them. Um, his big bodyguard guy steps in probably just to make sure AJ's okay but at, at least AJ can take a bump if this was any other referee the referee would be dead they would have called the match but AJ, I'll tell you what AJ Styles actually has a pretty good cadence and count I mean whenever he did the one two, whenever he go one two uh, nope two again one two nope it was close but not, not three it was two he was actually really consistent with his counts. AJ Styles, there is a new job for you in the WWE soon. Um, and then Sheamus hit the Irish Chris backbreaker. Braun hit a splash in the corner. Lee, Lee starts, he isolates in one corner. Um, Sheamus, the other corner, Braun. Just goes back and forth with the big splashes. <laughs> and Keith Lee... He just like tossed Sheamus into Braun, used Matt Riddle as as a weapon, and spirit bombed him on Braun. Um, eventually, Sheamus kicked Braun, and this led to a roll up of all things. And Matt Riddle and Keith Lee win. It was actually pretty good. It was entertaining. This is a cheeseburger match. And AJ Styles, for the most part, was an, was an even referee. It's like, hey, I will count. I will count and disqualify you. Hey, I'm going to start counting. One, two, let him go. Three, oh, okay, good. You let him go. That's, we're, we're, we're all good now. Then again, it's like, hey, listen, he, he tagged you. You have to get out. He actually, give credit where credit is due. AJ Styles did call it down the middle. And bravo. Um, then we had a little bit of Alexa and Nikki Cross. Those two are probably gonna gonna wrestle each other for Alexa's soul, for your immortal soul. So we'll see that match. And Nikki Cross just looks so so sad. I just want to give Nikki a big hug. Maybe that's what the comment. Oh, I know what the <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll I'll get to it later. <laughs> that was actually a funny comment. Um, then we have Lashley and MVP promo. Titus O'Neil shows up. We have an impromptu match. Bobby Lashley takes on Titus O'Neil. Um, Titus O'Neil just goes right to the brawl. Heavy hands by Titus O'Neil. Uh, isolated Bobby Lashley in the corner, shoulders to the gut, classic stuff. However, Titus O'Neil made, made the mistake of sending Bobby Lashley off the ropes. Lashley hit the spear. 
She actually had a hard time getting the hurt lock in. You don't realize how big Titus O'Neil is until you see him against another big person. But eventually did the, the hurt lock on. This was a good enough match. Um, the, the line of the night goes to MVP. He, because as he was leaving the ring, oh, so he goes, oh yeah, Titus, this match is going to be in the ring, not underneath the ring. Oh, just cast that, 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 that jab, that, that poke from when he slid underneath the ring at, at the world's greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia somewhere, Qatar, I have no idea. But I'll tell you what, this match, it did what it did for Bobby Lashley. It's setting him up. He's, I hope he, he's going to pulverize Sami Zayn. This was actually a ham sandwich match. Then we have Drew and Sheamus backstage. Um, they they miss. Uh, Sheamus said, "What did I do wrong?" And Drew's like, "Well, well, don't kick your partner out of the ring." <laughs> ah, stating the obvious. Thank you, Drew McIntyre, for that statement. Um. And Shane was like, what? I don't even like him. It's like, and those those two guys, New Day, I don't like them either. And, and of course, Drew's going, New. New Day rocks. New Day rocks. <laughs> so so that's the way Drew exits stage, stage left. That was good. Our truth was giving a promo. And he thought he was going to have seven photographers. No, he's in a, he's in a, a seven-wing match. I thought they were just orgies. That was probably the line that, that got people chuckling. Um, Angel Garza then cuts a promo. Nah, it's okay. It's going to get old unless he actually does something. You need to see him. like He he has to be the Latin Lothario, Rick Rude type person. And he has to get the wrong person's woman. He has to give the wrong person's woman a rose or something. Just like uh, Rick Rude did, I think, to Jake the Snake's wife way back in the day. But then um, we had Asuka. Oh, yeah. We had Asuka versus Nia Jax. It was kind of out of order because I just wanted to save space in my notebook. Um, this, was actually, this was actually pretty good. Asuka did a flying octopus. Asuka's definitely going for the submission. She knows like her jujitsu and all of her submission stuff. Um, not as, oh, actually, the match they had in, in NXT was awful. But this was definitely better than that. So they, they learned something. I was just waiting for Nia just to slip a potato in or put potato or two in. Didn't happen. I'm shocked at So either someone said, Nia, this is Asuka. She will kick you in the head. Because Nia Jax is known to potato people every so often. She is that potato factory. Um, but Asuka hit the flying octopus and then a flying Jujigatami into the triangle. That was great. Um, Asuka... However, try to hit a Hurricanrana from to the outside. She gets caught by Nia Jax. Nia Jax again just, just kind of whaps her in, into the barricade. Um, back in the action in the ring, Nia hits a splash in the corner. Um, Asuka, again, she actually hit. She reversed one power bomb into a Hurricanrana. That was great. Uh, then did a hip attack and kicks. Lana got up in the ring. Bad idea, Lana. You should have just ran. Why didn't you run when you had the chance to, to, to run? Blondes are dumb, I guess. I've never had good luck with blondes either. They're not no, dumb. But yeah, um, so then that causes Shayna to get on top. Um, then Oscar, Oscar, Oscar hip attacks both Lana and Shayna. This was enough distraction. For Nia Jax, it kind of breaks her concentration because as Nia Jax had Asuka up in a power bomb again, um, Asuka kind of slows out of it, gets stuck into the Asuka lock. Nia Jax doesn't tap, but it's smart because Asuka wins because Shayna Baszler came in to save her partner, so that made sense. It was actually pretty good. It wasn't as bad as the one match they had in NXT years ago. This was a cheeseburger match. However, Lana, you got involved. You know nothing good was going to happen. Um, Nia Jax and Shannon Baszler quickly dispose of Mandy Rose. Dana Brooke, they go right right to Lana. Lana goes through the table again. If it wasn't for that, it would have been boring. 
Then we had the uh, seven-way match. It was R-Truth, Tozawa, Drew Gulak, Eric Rowe. I don't know why they're doing it to him. Tucker Knight. I don't know why. Grand Metal Leak. And Lindsay Dorado. Two of those people do not belong in the loser locker room. Eric Rowe does not belong in the loser locker room. Tucker Knight. Dumbest idea. Let's just split him up. I'm heavy mach- I, I don't know. Who knows? Oh, so it's a uh, big brawl. Our truth sneaks out of it. Zawa gets the better of our truth. Zawa wins, and then they just literally like trade the titles. The title changed hands five times. I th- um, so Zawa held the belt. Eric Rowe hit held the belt. Drew Gulak held the belt. Tucker Knight is now a champion. He got a belt before Otis did. Didn't last long because Grand Metal League rolled him up. Because it was Mustafa Ali, not Mustafa Ali. Stupid Michael Cole. Uh, Mustafa Ali taking Rick- Ricochet, and of course, rest, the rest of Retribution is there. Uh, I know who they are. It's literally, be, it's literally Hannibal Lectris, Casey Jones, Bane, and the Predator. I don't even want to call them by their names. I don't want to call them by their wrestling names. Because it's lame. Mustafa Ali versus Ricochet. This is actually pretty good. Uh, Ricochet controls most of the match. Um, again, strike heavy, but off the ropes. The rope runnings between these two are great. They could have an amazing. They could have an amazing wrestling match, if if they were allowed to. Um, however, Ricochet gets a little overconfident, eats the second turnbuckle. Then it's Ali's time to, to to kind of control the pace of the match. And even though he's a heel, he still has that faster pace, flippy stuff, which both can do so well. It would have been absolutely amazing to to have seen Mustafa Ali and Ricochet in Lucha Underground, where they could say here. You're wrestling, there's your match. Do whatever. That would have been amazing. This, it was good, but not necessarily amazing. Uh, Ricochet, he did that, that that good dragon suplex. That was so good. And this was classic match stuff with, with, with some good flippy stuff added. It wasn't all flippy, flippy stuff. It was good, though. It was, it was, it was a good combination of everything. Uh, Ali on the top rope did the, oh, Ricochet again, caught Ali from Ali trying a tornado DDT. He turned that into a Northern Lights bridging suplex. Uh, turned that and then held on to that. Hit a brain buster. Brain buster should finish people. I don't care what they say. Uh, then I'll, and then Ricochet brings Ali to the top. He really wants to do something crazy. Ali, of course, get, gets together. Senses, eye rakes, Ricochet. Hit a top row backstabber. Again, that should also be a finisher. Um, Ricochet got one quick forearm in first. That was really good. Then he had like the spinal tap on Retribution to the outside. That was awesome. I think AJ Styles used to do that every so often. And it would be neat to see AJ Styles bust at the spinal tap one more time. Um, so after that, he goes up. He, he misses a 630. Um, then Ali hits, hits that choke. It's a really interesting show because he uses his legs and arms and he does it in such a way. It looks really good. It looks like like a really good catch wrestling, catch jiu-jitsu move. Um, Ali wins. Um, I'll tell you what, this was a good match. Another cheeseburger match. Let's <laughs> see uh, Randy Orton is backstage. He's doing, he's talking with Adam Pierce, um, well, threatening Adam Pierce somehow, and this led to our main event of the evening. It was Randy Orton, The Miz, and John Morrison Mundo taking on the New Day and Drew McIntyre. <sighs> John Morrison is good. They have to let him be Johnny Mundo though. They have to let him do do Mundo stuff. Um, Starship Pain's amazing. Uh, Midnight Drive is amazing. 
They just have to let they have to let him do his, his flippy stuff. I don't care what Vince doesn't like about Mundo, the fact that he was in Lucha Underground, the fact that he was in, in Impact. He had a lot more freedom. He had probably the most freedom in Lucha Underground, and then he had a lot of freedom in Impact, and now he's being told to dial it down. He might want to dial it down because he does some crazy stuff, but still, this is Johnny Mundo. Maybe Taya told him to, to, to hey, Tranquilo. Who knows? Uh, Morrison and Drew McIntyre start off. Bad idea. Um, Mundo, he does great, car- uh, John Morrison does great cartoonish, near Dolph like cell jobs, uh, fly- flying all over the place whenever Drew does anything to him. Uh, again, he and Xa- uh, Xavier Woods tags in the great rope running. He has such good chemistry, he has a, such a good feel. When he's in motion, he can kind of feel and sense what the other person is doing. I know they probably go over spots and stuff, but again, the fact that you, you have that natural ability, that's something you can't teach. Johnny Mundo has it, and I just feel so sad that they're not letting him do what he can do. And then it's the Mrs. Churn, um, tags Mundo in because Randy does not want to be tagged in. Uh, he doesn't want anything to do with this match. The, the Miz gets double teamed by the by New Day, and then the Miz and Morrison do, uh, do a double stomp. That was great. Again, they work together greatly. They a m- tremendous working together. Again, they hit, again they do that uh, uh, very similar uh, suspended stomp on the ape ring near the ring apron. It was really good. Uh, when Drew gets a hot tag, however, yeah, that's the end of that. Um, again, still Randy Orton does does not want to tag. He puts his hand down. No, nope, not coming in. Uh, Drew gets in. He gets a hot tag. He just double tosses Mun- Miz and Mundo. Oh, Morrison. Terrible habit. Um, Drew attempts Orton to come in. Orton's just like, give me my belt. I'm out of here. Uh, Mundo tries a dirty pin roll up. Uh, uh, I think Kofi Kingston kicked his feet off the ropes. Miz gets up. Uh, Mundo gets. Uh, Miz, I think, gets the Future Shock DDT. Mundo tried to do something flying. Instead, he eats a headbutt. That looked gnarly. Um, then gets Claymore for his efforts. The New Day and Dream McIntyre win. In a cheeseburger match. Well, the good news is it wasn't a slog of a show. It just wasn't that exciting. It was a ham sandwich of a show. Okay, a little bit about this week's schedule. Um, I need some time off. (laughs) I need to take a break. I have one complete day coming off which is my first complete day off since Labor Day back in September. So what's going to happen, this show goes up tomorrow morning because I'm doing that that tonight. It's going to process. Tomorrow I still do my Impact Live live review. We'll see how that goes. Um, Wednesday I might skip AEW. Might. I might do a really abbreviated review of it Thursday. I'm not guaranteeing anything, though. It's my first true day off from all my jobs, including my hobby, this, literally since Labor Day. And I know on Labor Day, I still did my uh, WWE show. But, yeah, I need to, to tranquilo for, like, one day. So all I ask is one day, one day off, one day off every couple of months. That's terrible. Um, then Thursday, I'm going to have um, either, maybe I'll have Dr. Tom. I'll have Dr. Tom try to redeem himself, and he'll do the predictions for the Impact show on Saturday. So Thursday is going to be a prediction show. Set, uh, Friday is going to be typical uh, Friday Night Smackdown. And then I'll be back live streaming. Um, I don't know when exactly. 
I'll probably have a nice, delicious cheesesteak. That sounds so good now that I think about it. Um, for Saturday night's dinner, let this be a classic cheesesteak. I, I've I've made a video about that already. Probably just steak, cheese, and I'll tell you what, I tried some of that special sauce by Hidden Valley Ranch. It's good stuff. Um, so I'll do that. Again, probably get most of that show in. And that's the week. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching.